Hello, everyone. Welcome to the final bar. Today, my guest is Willie Delwich from All Star Charts. We're going to talk about short term to long term, how to make sense of this market environment. The S&P making new all time highs again today, but closing in a position of weakness. So we've had this continued pattern the last couple of days where growth starts to do just OK, starts to do fine. The Nasdaq up two and a half percent today. Uh, but the S&P closing lower by the end. What does this mean overall long term? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final bar. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Final Bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller. I'm the chief market strategist here at StockCharts.com in a sunny Redmond, Washington. Thanks for joining us every weekday after the close as we look at the markets together using charts, using the power of data visualization, trying to quantify what we're seeing and what that means for the overall market environment. I was interviewing uh, Mark Dibble from Fidelity Investments, who is one of my former colleagues and, uh, and analysts uh, up at, uh, at Fidelity in Boston. And we were talking about the power of data visualization, talking about the Fidelity chart room and just the benefits of learning about market history, market regimes, leadership, laggardship, but doing it through visualization. That's really the essence of technical analysis. That's what Stock Charts was, uh, was created to, uh, to help investors uh, to, to do, was to, uh, to better visualize market behavior, market act dynamics, market activity, and help you be on the right side of trends more than you're not. We have some great guests along the way to help us try to make sense of things. I'm excited to talk to Willie Delwich now with All Star Charts, joining us in a bit. Coming up next week, we have three solid guests for you. Jason Geffert from Sentiment Trader is coming on the show on uh, March 16th on Tuesday. On Wednesday the 17th, Craig Johnson, technical uh, strategist at Piper Jaffrey. So we have sort of a Minneapolis theme to the beginning of, uh, of next week. And then we go back to New York on Thursday uh, to uh, interview Tony Dwyer from uh, Canaccord Genuity and Dwyer Strategy coming on the show Thursday the 18th. Also, as a reminder, next, uh, the Monday after that, on Monday, March 22nd, Chart Madness is our bracketology themed stock picking exercise. I have been uh, having a healthy debate with uh, my fellow participants, Greg Chanel, Grayson Rose, and Tom Boley about uh, how we will debate these stocks and uh, which we will include in our bracket of 16 names. You will uh, have the picks ahead of time. You can fill out your own brackets and see how we discuss and debate those matchups. That's coming up on March 22nd called Chart Madness. Let's get to our market recap. So the uh, this day, if you look at the trading day, sort of a trail, uh, a tale of two markets, the first half of the day and the second half of the day, which is not unusual. That uh, can happen a lot where you have a big move out of the open and then things sort of settle down around lunchtime and change configuration where you get a big distribution out of the open and then things sort of buyers come in around midday and, uh, and push the price higher. Um, so overall, the shape of the S&P was acceleration out of the open, uh, gapping higher, making a new all-time high, touching 39.60 earlier today, and then closing down just below 39.40. Uh, so, you know, what's interesting, if you look at the last hour of the last couple of days, the S&P continues to close uh, lower going into the close. That is not super encouraging to me because that speaks more to distribution on people, you know, taking profits on this little bounce and a lot of growthy uh, things. But... I certainly can be can be wrong on that, and it's hard to, you know, be be tapping the brakes too much on the markets when the S and P is making an all time high. Someone probably at some point in my career uh, along the way said, "Don't be bullish," or sorry, "Don't be bearish when the market's at all time highs." Uh, so I will I will follow their advice and tell you as we have talked about until we get breakdowns, until we get breaks below uh, previous lows, the market still is in decent shape. We'll look at a chart of the S and P here in a minute to. Uh, fill in some of the details on that thesis. As I mentioned, technology really led the way higher today with the NASDAQ 100 up about 2.4%. Mid caps and small caps are up as well and up a little more than uh, the S&P. Uh, and again, that's sort of the mega cap financials, uh, big utility companies, others sort of uh, came off today. In terms of other asset classes, 10-year uh, yields just above 1.5%, still the TLT down uh, a little bit, just uh, closing right around 139. Commodities as a whole, and this is really uh, oil prices that sort of led the way uh, higher, uh, strengthened pretty well, but energy stocks did not really participate. They were flat on the day, 
uh, from yesterday's close. It's sort of a mixed bag and precious metals uh, ended up uh, down. Gold was a really choppy session if you look at the GLD sort of uh, right around the zero line for much of the day. Cryptocurrencies continue to go higher with Bitcoin uh, approaching the 58,000 level. So it's approaching its previous all time high. We're gonna talk a little later, I'll show you a long-term projection on Bitcoin based on a potential breakout above 58,000 where I think things could be going from there. Let's look at a chart of the S&P and try to make sense of uh, what's been going on here. So, you know, it's interesting. I've had some great discussions with some people that I respect, uh, peers in the industry that uh, many of which have been doing this much longer than I have, just trying to make a sense of things. And, you know, if I could summarize our conversations, we're drawing a lot of similarities to what we're seeing now to previous bull market phases when there are clear signs of euphoria, when there are clear signs of stocks going up that you feel like they shouldn't, you know, a, a huge influx of demand for some of these names that pushes them well above what you could consider a reasonable valuation. Uh, and that usually is happening at the later stages. But, you know, a book I'm reading called Bull by, I think it's Maggie Mayhar, talks about the 1982 to 2004 period. And when it talks about, you know, 1996, there were signs of a market being euphoric and overextended in 1996. Now, if you if you went bearish in 1996, you missed the next four years. Now, they were granted some some big turns. And if you held all the way through 2002, you probably did OK by by selling them. But it did not feel good to miss the last you know three to four years of a bull market phase. And that's why it's really tough to be incredibly bearish at this type of environment. Again, when we're making uh, you know new highs intraday. Um, so having said that, you know, we talked about sort of the bear market scenario that had been potentially playing out, and I would argue is still playing out in some form, uh, even through today. And we saw where the S&P systematically broke through a number of those, uh, you know, lines in the sand, breaking down through trend line support, which has happened a couple of times, breaking down through its 50 day moving average, breaking to a new swing low, all of that was happening. The only thing we did not do sort of break this first uh, Fibonacci retracement level, break the low from the end of January, right at S&P 3,700. And as we were approached it, it was like, all right, this is the last thing we would need to do to really think about uh, you know, a higher likelihood of further downside. We've never eclipsed that. And a lot of the stocks that push their way lower here, things like semiconductors, if we switch gears and look there for a second, you know, this is the huge glaring bearish divergence that we've been talking about. Uh, came off. The RSI uh, ended up bottoming up around uh, 40. And you can see it has undercut its January low. Bounced back pretty well, up uh, 4% today. So up even more than the uh, the overall market. So is it encouraging that uh, technology uh, stocks, in particular, something like semiconductors, have big up days on a day like this? Absolutely right. I can't help but notice, though, that while the S&P is making new all-time highs, semiconductors are still pretty far below 30 points below their um, their all-time high there in mid-February. So while, again, it is nowhere near the end of the world, I'm not seeing end of the world, world signals by any means, it's just technology overall over the last month still very much lagging relative to others. And the question is, how much materially higher could we go without technology stocks participating? Um, uh, and, and the answer is, it depends, right? If you look at 99 to 2000, the market actually continued to go higher, even though technology stocks were selling off. Certain parts of the market continued to make new highs while the tech bubble was actually popping and technology shares were coming down. It was later that everything started to sort of agree with it. And again, while I don't, I don't necessarily think we're, we're looking at 2001 to 2002 again, although we certainly, anything is possible, um, I am seeing sort of those late you know, bull market signs where you see breakdowns in technology and it feels suspiciously like that period back there. Uh, let's continue on, uh, you know, looking at some other uh, some other themes here on a sector basis. You had technology up over 2%, followed by communication services. And when you look at the uh, the 11 S&P sectors, uh, you know, it strikes me how uh, how good communication services actually looks. Um, this is the candle glance page we often uh, we often look at. And if you just glance through here and look at what sectors are uh, at or near long term or, or all time highs, it's industrials, it's energy, it's financials. Uh, it's materials. It is not consumer discretionary. It is not technology. But communication services, actually, if you if you have to find one of the best performers year to date, even with the give back that um, that Com Services had at the beginning of January, since then it's just really accelerated to the upside, making a new 52-week uh, uh, high today, a new closing high today, really powering through to the upside. Now, you know some of the top-ranked scooter stocks. If you look at our scooter rankings, it's things like Viacom. Discovery, Disney rates very highly. These are all in that sort of media entertainment space, all of which uh, have been in really good trends 
and have really broken out uh, pretty consistently to uh, to the upside. So not surprising to see that sector there, but but certainly following through to the upside today. On the downside, what did not really participate in today's uh, today's bounce higher financials at the bottom, utilities number two from the bottom, and then consumer staples. So financials and energy, which have been two of the strongest sectors, followed by things like industrials and materials, really not a part of the story today. It was back to uh, sort of the uh, the uh, the big growth trade. Um, other things just to tease out, just to wrap up our, uh, our market recap, I'd encourage you to spend some time, as always, with stocks on the move, stocks that have had uh, big, big, uh, big fluctuations. Uh, looking at FCX, this is uh, obviously in the materials sector. You know, a chart like this, I, I'm always fascinated by charts that don't really speak to a disrupted market. I think the chart of the S&P at times has looked challenged. The chart of technology has looked challenged. The chart of Freeport Macground just looks like it's more of the same as this continued uh, pounding higher and higher. Every pullback for the last year has been incredibly viable and it's been a short-term weakness uh, you know, and uh, as part of this longer-term uptrend. So it continues to go higher. This is despite a bearish divergence like many stocks have, uh, have had. So you know, again, charts like this that are continuing to go higher you know, if, is there, if there are any warning signs that I'm seeing in terms of the move, it's that momentum is really not accelerating on some of these names. And on the S&P itself, uh, same thing. If you look at breadth readings, not really blowing to new highs necessarily, uh, all of them. Um, so, so there are some warning signs. But again, until proven otherwise, the path of least resistance is up. And I think we're seeing this on, on media stocks. We're seeing this on FCX uh, materials names and, uh, and others. So when in doubt, follow the trend. The trend is up. We need to take a quick commercial break. Back with my guest, Willie Dowich. We'll see you in a minute. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Final Bar. This is Dave Keller here at StockCharts.com. It's so good to have you join us every weekday after the close as we make sense of these markets together using the power of technical analysis, the power of stock charts. Uh, as a reminder, we'll do another mailbag segment on Friday's show, and we would love to answer one of your questions on the air. Get your questions to us one of three ways via email, thefinalbar at StockCharts.com, on Twitter at FinalBarSCTV, on our YouTube channel. Just put a comment below the video that you're watching. We'd love to answer one of your questions in our next mailbag segment. Also, as a reminder, the new Stock Charts TV On Demand is out and available and ready for you to enjoy. Go to stockchartstv.com, set up a free account with your email. You can start watching the content immediately. All of our shows are great hosts, great content, great educational uh, uh, content is all on, the, uh, on there. It's also on all the app stores. So uh, anywhere on any uh, devices that you have, Check out Stock Charts TV on demand. I want to welcome on my guest to the show, Willie Delwich. Willie is the uh, investment strategist at All Star Charts, coming to us from the upper Midwest in uh, Wisconsin. Willie, welcome back to the show. Uh, thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. So we've been talking on this show in recent weeks, if not recent months, about a, a market in transition, right? The S&P having an incredible run, but you know potential huge challenges, rotations with technology coming off. Now the S&P back making new highs again uh, today. Start us there with the S&P. What are you seeing? Yeah, so um, so, so the S&P 500 is making new highs. Um, one thing I like to, to look at to, to gauge whether or not those are sustainable is, is kind of what sort of global participation we're seeing in the market. And that's what, that's what this chart is showing. It's a percentage of world markets um, above, above their 50 day moving average. So this, this is the, the indexes in the the ACWI, um, all, you know, all world index, and you know, break it out by different countries. And um, we had seen some deterioration. We were, you know, early part of this year was close to 100%. We're above their 50-day moving average. We've seen that drip lower. Um, actually, at the end of last week, we got into what we consider kind of our danger zone below 40%. Um, the good news is that this week we've we've seen some stabilization. Um, and we're starting to see an expansion now. This morning we were at about 48%. Um, if the the highs that we're seeing in the in the S and P 500 are, I, I think, good highs, if you will, or sustainable highs, then we'd like to see this move back up to about 70% or so. And so 
um, the strength we saw in emerging markets today, I think that's encouraging. That's that's been where a lot of the um, the deterioration has been, frankly, mm-hmm. over, over the past few weeks. So um, if we can build on on what we saw today, then then maybe we'll we'll be back up into that green zone. And that that su- suggests that not only there's a path of least resistance higher, but maybe it's a little less rocky than than what we've seen recently. Um, now, yeah, continuing on here, we're looking at uh, at a couple different components. Uh, talk us through chart number two. Yeah, so um, you know a lot of talk in the past week about um, you know what's happened in the market, about you know the different high flying stocks that have you know how far they've come down. The Nasdaq has, has um, come down. You showed a chart of semiconductors weakening. Well, for for a lot of investors, that's the market. And and my encouragement is maybe let, let's think about a broader opportunity set of investments. And um, when you do it. When you do that and you look at the S&P equal weight index, you look at broker dealers or financials in general, um, look overseas, look at the German DAX or Europe overall, you, what you see is a pattern of new highs emerging. And so, um, yes, there are some areas of the market that are consolidating and are off their highs, but even through that consolidation, there are still areas that are, are moving higher and moving higher after spending, you know, considerable amount of times lagging the rest of rest of the market. So um, these aren't just areas that, you know, they're isolated areas that it's, it's good just for their own sake. These are areas that equal weight S&P, the broker dealers, the DAX, if they're doing well, that speaks to a favorable backdrop for stocks overall. So that's, that's one of my my favorite kind of inner market um, charts to look at to, to just kind of gauge not just what the headlines are showing us, but digging a little deeper and saying, okay, what, what are the moves beneath the surface? That's such a fantastic chart, Willie. And I love, it's, it's as you sort of implied, it's, it's hard to be bearish or it would be hard to be bearish when all three of these are going up, which they clearly are, right? Until that changes, uh, yeah. it certainly seems that there's cause for, uh, for optimism. Yeah, I, I think yeah. so. And, and speaking, of, speaking of causes for optimism, um, you know, Maybe it's a little bit weird to to get on here and talk about the market and and show a chart of you know economic growth and 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 what economists think about what might happen. But but I think if we step back um, and and we visualize, you, you talked about this earlier, visualizing data, we've gotten so used to over the past twenty years to having these these uh, professional forecasters put out economic estimates and having that be the ceiling for growth. You know that that's that's been the experience really since two thousand. If you go back prior to that, then when we, especially coming out of recessions, but really all the time, these forecasts were a floor for growth. And I think that's the kind of environment that we're moving into. You have sharp moves out of recessions where growth moves above forecasts and then stays there. Um, that was the norm prior to the 2000, 2010s. Um, you know, with the fiscal stimulus that we got this week and the Fed continuing to su- supply liquidity, it seems to me that we could be in, in that previous environment. And if that's the case, then some of the stuff we're talking about with equal weight leadership, financial leadership, international leadership, that's the type of thing that could persist for a while and not just be kind of a short term, um, I don't wanna even call it mean reversion, but you, you, they have a, a, a blip of, of leadership and then it's back to just tech and just growth um, all over again. So I'm encouraged from a long-term perspective about what this might mean for the economy going forward, and then what we as investors can do in that economy. We only have about thirty seconds left, Willie, but I'd love to, to to hear your thoughts on if you you know if you had new money to put to work today, is it do you look more at something like emerging markets, which as you mentioned, you know pulled back pretty pretty clearly, but have started to see a bounce? Is it something like gold, which has been beaten down even more that you know hasn't really had signs of life, or is it things like? financials and others that have been uh, really the leadership recently, where would you be looking opportunistically right now? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd look emerging markets and then U.S. based areas that can take advantage of emerging market growth. And so maybe it's, mm-hmm. you know, material stocks, maybe it's industrial stocks, things like, you know, Caterpillar or something like that. Um, you know, emerging market growth is likely to come. They're going to need some some tools and some resources to be able to take advantage of that. Um, I, I think you look for the U.S. companies that, that can take advantage of that. Willie, it's so good to have you back on the show. Thanks for some good long-term perspective and, uh, and, and showing us how the world looks in your eyes. Hope you and uh, those around you stay safe. We'll talk to you again soon. 
Thanks a lot, Dave. That's Willie Delwich. Willie's the investment strategist at All Star Charts. Uh, just a fantastic uh, uh, thoughts on the market. I've always loved uh, hearing Willie's uh, big picture perspective. Uh, you know, in a, in a market that's uncertain, when you have a lot of uh, you know fluid movements, a lot of question marks. Uh, I think he has a, had a great uh, a great sense of the uh, of the overall trajectory on there. You know, and it's it's funny. You know, as as Willie talks, I think there's. There's certainly a mix with uh, with people that are very encouraged by what they're seeing, and that second chart that he showed, showing um, you know Germany going higher, broker dealers going higher, equal weighted S and P going higher. Those are the charts that, in uh, in a former life, I would tend to print out and paste on the wall of my office just to remind everyone: if these keep going up, don't get too negative because there are opportunities still out there. There's still stocks going up and to the right. It was a great take from uh, Willie Delwich. Our next segment is called Getting Sentimental. We love to do on a Thursday is look at a lot of the sentiment readings. Most of the weekly sentiment readings will update on Wednesdays or Thursdays. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's a good opportunity to sort of check in and see what the sentiment is, uh, is telling us. And uh, if, uh, by the way, if you want to get this uh, group of charts, this chart list, this is part of the morning coffee routine chart pack that you can access uh, on, your, um, on your stock charts account. If you go to the member dashboard, go to chart lists, I have an obscene number of these and uh, I do need to clean them up at some point. It's on my list. But when I get to the very bottom, you will see a little gray button that says manage chart packs. When you click on that, you will see mine listed, which is called, uh, where is it? David Keller's morning coffee routine chart pack. Just hit install. It'll install this, uh, this group of charts along with another series, uh, other series of chart lists as well that should be uh, pretty helpful for you. We'll start out with the VIX. The VIX, as you probably know, is uh, is based on options, and it uh, and it gives you a sense of volatility. It's it's trying to measure or imply sort of the overall volatility scenario in the markets, uh, and it's often called the fear gauge because uh, you know people tend to panic when the market turns lower. Uh, you know, stocks sell off, people uh, get very anxious, get very excited. The volatility increases, and so in general, there's an inverse relationship between the VIX and stocks. And you can see in generally when uh, in general, when the S and P is going lower, the VIX is going higher, and the opposite, when the uh, market starts going higher, you can see the VIX tends to come off. And that is not 100% of the time; it's not always that uh, obvious of a relationship. And there have been times, even recently, as I was talking with uh, one of our, uh, our other uh, contributors, Dave Landry, who was pointing out some times when the market can go higher on an increasing VIX. And in the end of uh, of August of last year was a good example of that, where uh, stocks were going higher and volatility was actually increasing. Having said that, in general, it tends to be an inverse relationship. What's worth noting about this chart right here is we're going back to this blue shaded area. This has tended to be uh, you know, where uh, a, a lower end of the VIX range, if you look for the last year, uh, you know, really take the uh, you know, February to March of 2020 period out and the coming back down because that was a, you know, essentially a, uh, a huge outlier level for the VIX. If you come back to what is normal now, normal used to be about 12 on the lower end, 10 to 12, up to uh, the low 20s on the upper end. That's what 2019 was like. 2020 has been more of an elevated range. It's really fluctuated between four, uh, 20 on the lower end and like 35 to 40 on the uh, on the upper end. So uh, what we can see is we're actually re-entering the lower end of this uh, of this range, which tells you either we're entering a new regime of low volatility or we're getting to this point where uh, it's similar to the bottom and the VIX. And the bottom and the VIX often has been a, uh, a top in stocks but not always. And again, I'd caution, this is why I don't use it necessarily as a timing tool. Uh, it's more, uh, you know, describing the volatility scenario. Use other things to sort of fill in the gaps on what you're seeing with, uh, with stocks, but it's worth noting it's at one of the lower levels that it's been for the last year. Chart two is looking at the AAII bull and bear uh, rankings. The survey is the American Association of Individual Investors. I actually just spoke earlier this week to the AAII Puget Sound chapter here in the Seattle area, which was uh, a lot of fun. We had a lively discussion about uh, all things equity investing, a lot of names that we sort of uh, debated and hashed out together. It was, uh, it was great fun. Uh, but the AAII survey is a weekly survey, people deciding whether they are bullish, bearish, or neutral on stocks for the next six months, I'm, I'm pretty sure is how it's uh, it's worded. This week, the reading back up to 49% bullish. Last week, it was uh, it was just around 40%. So we've had a big, big increase in, uh, in bullish respondents. The spread from bullish to bearish is back up to one of the higher levels, sort of an elevated range. What I've usually thought, and talking with Mark Young at uh, Wall Street Sentiment, he would always say an, a VIX above 50, or sorry, a, a AAII bullish reading above 
is really in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, very uh, small uh, set of occurrences of uh, of extreme bullishness, and we're right about there, if not uh, just almost there. So worth keeping an eye on that to see if we back have back to an uh, an elevated uh, an elevated reading, get back about fifty percent perhaps next week. The name exposure index is a fascinating one, and we we might uh, need to leave it here. Uh, the name exposure index active investment managers. So these are our money managers. And they can go 200% long, 100% long, 0%, 100% short, 200% short. Those are the five responses that you can uh, you can give on the survey. Um, about a month ago, three uh, let's say three weeks ago and four weeks ago, the reading was around 105 to 107. I want to say maybe almost 108, uh, which was uh, one of the higher levels in history. The, one of the the very highest levels. Uh, the second highest level in history was in uh, January of this year, by the way. February was, I think, the fourth and fifth highest reading or something very, very close uh, to uh, to leverage long there. In three weeks, this has gone completely down to 48%. So we've gone from about 108% long to 48% long. That is, as you can uh, do the math, a 60% swing in the, uh, in the, per, in the um, uh, positioning there for equities, which is what this tells you is that active money managers over the last couple of weeks have uh, not just taken their foot off the accelerator, but stepped on the brakes and, and put it on there, taking some of the exposure off, the long exposure off, trying to ride this environment, uh, environment out uh, overall. I think that's an interesting change of character from what we saw three weeks ago, the last time the S&P was making new all-time closing highs. We need to leave it there. That's our read, uh, Getting Sentimental, reading the latest sentiment readings. Again, that chart list is part of the morning coffee routine chart pack you can access from your member dashboard. We need to wrap the show, go to the three and three, three charts, three minutes. Here we go. Chart number one is the XLK. We're looking at the technology sector. You know, I, I really enjoyed talking with uh, with Willie Delwich about uh, what he saw. And again, with a lot of my conversations recently, if you look at financials, if you look at certain parts of the market, things seem fine, right? Stocks are making new highs. The charts in there look pretty consistent. There's nothing to worry about. Where it gets worrisome is if you look at something like technology, if you look at the NASDAQ, look at semiconductors, these are all uh, you know, growthy areas that have come, uh, come down pretty good. They're all bouncing beautifully today with, uh, in this week with things like clean energy, solar stocks, you know, plug power all up, uh, you know, almost double digits, if not double digits today. So bouncing really beautifully off of these lows and the XOK bouncing off of uh, 125. The question is, what sustainable run can you have without technology? Are we rotating away enough from technology? These can continue to flounder and, uh, and the market overall can hold up. Okay, the answer so far in the last month has been yes. The question is, how sustainable is that? And that's a chart I'd certainly want to be, uh, want to be following. Chart number two is communication services. I mentioned when you think about um, uh, when you think about uh, the the strength in different sectors and where you're what's working and what isn't, it's hard to find a better example of a chart that's working than communication services. If you look at the relative strength from mid January; it's been fantastic, strong outperformer. The price has been in a continued uptrend, higher highs, higher lows. That really that uptrend has not even uh, has not even uh, flickered yet continuing to uh, to go up and to the right. And again, a lot of the top ranked names in our scooter rankings are in this sector, uh, especially media and entertainment names, as I, as I mentioned, things like Viacom, Discovery, uh, Disney, and, uh, and others. Finally, we have Bitcoin. I mentioned, I alluded to a, uh, an upside measurement. You know, back when Bitcoin was breaking above 20,000, I suggested a, an upside target of 37,000, which seemed astronomical at the time. And then about a month or two later, we hit it and just continued right on going. We did chop around there for quite a while. And if you look back in January, it was about a 32% pullback from peak to valley. And then we broke out and went another 38% higher to make a high just around uh, 58,000. We've now pulled back again, just under 30%, so a very similar pullback to January. If we get a same pattern, if we break above 58,000, which would break to a new all-time high and continue a similar measured move, that would take us to Bitcoin 75 to 80,000. That would be my upside target if we break above 58,000. Folks, that is our show for today. Thank you so much to Willie Delwich from All Star Charts joining us from Wisconsin today, sharing his thoughts on the markets. For StockCharts.com in Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be safe. Have a good night. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.